brings us to 4.2, which is presentations, uh, public comment on items that are not on the agenda. And my board shows eight speakers. Is that in agreement with yours, Beth? Yes. Okay, so that's um, three minutes each. I, I will call your names, but it's only as good as your penmanship was for Beth to enter. So if you could please make sure you're sitting up in the front row. Josephine, followed by Joni, followed by Jean. This is the microphone right here, so Josephine is first. Is there a Josephine? Yeah, we try not to lose. Two. Yeah, so if you could just please be all um, ready to go if you know you're speaking. Who is Josephine? Actually, I'm not Josephine. Okay. I'm not Josephine. Okay, then you can introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kenny Silva. My colleagues and I <laughs> all live in Santa Clara County and are volunteers with United Sovereign Americans, not spokespersons. United Sovereign Americans USA is a nationwide organization with thousands of active volunteers in over 20 states. Today we come to you as concerned citizens sharing the alarming information about our state's voter roll database. Research of the state's voter database was done through hundreds of hours of research conducted by highly qualified and credentialed data teams. An analysis of the 2022 election researched by the highly qualified data teams using only official data provided by California election officials indicates serious issues with compliance of federal law. We are here to present to you and the public the results of the aforementioned analysis showing the votes cast, counted, and certified may not all be valid and accurate under the Constitution and under the law. We are not here to cast any blame or aspersions on any elected official. We do not suggest any candidates in any race have wrongly won or lost their races, nor do we advocate for the overturning or rerunning of any past elections. Tonight we will present you with a resolution demanding an end to the inaccuracy and uncertainty, uncertainty plaguing our elections, along with the summary of our findings and the laws that apply. Though you bear no direct responsibility for anything in the electoral process, we come to you, our closest elected representatives, for support and action. We're asking that you listen to the resolution and take the necessity for valid elections seriously by adding it by adding the resolution to your next meeting agenda. Our next three speakers will read the resolution in three parts, and our final speaker will conclude our presentation. Thank you. Okay, so Beth, was that a speaker that was one of the eight? Yes. Okay, so now it's Josephine. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Josephine Kawanami, and I am here to read for, into the record for the first portion of the USA resolution. Resolution for a legally valid 2024 general election. Whereas it is recognized civil right in the United States for every citizen to have free and fair elections. Whereas it is the duty of our election officials to guarantee our elections are accurate and free from distortion or manipulation. Whereas our constitutional system of representative government only works when the following four tenets of an election are upheld. One. The voter rolls must be accurate, National Voter Registration Act 1993. Two, votes counted must be from eligible voters, U.S. Constitution, 14th Amendment, Section 2. Three, the number of votes counted must equal the number of voters who voted. Four, there can be no more than one in 125,000 ballots in error by the voting system, Help America Vote Act 2002. Whereas the analysis of California 2022 general election has uncovered evidence of massive inaccuracies that appear to violate both federal and state laws, including 5,886,198 ineligible or uncertain registration violations found within the California State Voter Roll Database. 2,776,939 votes cast by ineligible or uncertain registrations. 123,785 more votes counted than voters who voted. No one knows who cast them. 2,776,849 apparent voting violations in excess of the legal standard of system accuracies for a valid federal election. Maximum allowable system errors for the 2022 general election was 90. 
Certification, as defined by law, is an attestation of accuracy and compliance. The certification of the 2022 election appears to have been fraudulent and illegal. Thank you. Thank you. Joni M. My name is Joni Murphy, and I am here to read into the record the next section of the USA resolution. Whereas these findings trample legal accuracy requirements of the voting system during a federal election. Whereas the intent of the voters must be known factually before certification can be lawfully conducted. Whereas the 2022 general election appears to have been invalid, depriving us of the guaranteed protection of our natural rights under a government duly and provably chosen by us, the American people, resulting in incalculable damage to our families, our way of life, and the fabric of these United States. Therefore, we call upon our representatives to provide relief to the people and the assurance of domestic tranquility by joining us in demanding a valid 2024 general election that upholds these existing laws and equitable principles of law. One, proof of citizenship, identity, and eligibility required to register and vote, not anonymous attestation. Two, voter rolls certified accurate and available for public review and challenge 30 days before the start of early voting. Voters added after that date must bring proof of citizenship, identity, and address in person to a qualified official at each polling place. Three, hand-marked secure ballots similar to currency. Where imaging technology is used for tabulation, the security features must be verifiable in the ballot image. Four, systems, machines, security measures, infrastructure, and conduct are required to be compliant with federal law for fraud, for fraud prevention regarding risk assessment, certification, testing, and implementation. Five, adjudication must be signed off by party, candidate, and trained citizen witness after being given full and effective observation rights. Candidates and trained citizens must be allowed immediate access to ballots, ballot images, and cast vote records. Thank you. Thank you. Jean R. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Jean, and I am here to read into the record the last section of the USA resolution. Six, ballots, regardless of entry source, election operations, and systems must maintain end-to-end -end chain of custody from voter to vote count to final canvas, including auditability and witness transfer with paper records. Seven, a National Institute of Standards and Technology compliant, randomized, statistically valid, end-to-end -end audit with a 95% confidence level of all elections pursuant to the 14th Amendment, Section 2, must be performed. These audits are to be conducted by qualified, insured, and bonded security, forensics, or financial auditors, not personnel from within the election system. Reconciliation will include the vote count, real physical ballots, adjudication, cast vote records, ballot count, qualified voter count, custody transfer, and all other paper and electronic election systems, including logs. Eight, if the total of unique variances above is more than 10% of the margin of victory, a new election must be held in the state for those candidates affected, unless the issues can be provably corrected by a manual hand recount in a full review of records. Nine, waiver of requirements is not allowed. Only end-to-end -end system compliance from registration through certification can guarantee the intent of the people is accurately recorded. Be it resolved that the Gilroy City Council members stand in support 
with the concerns and remedies presented here. We implore the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors, California legislature, federal legislators, law enforcement, federal and state prosecutors, judges, and both California Secretary of State and County Registrars of Voters to cooperate and fulfill these firm requests of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Teresa Higginson. Good evening. My name is Teresa, and I'm here to conclude our presentation. What you heard tonight is a powerfully written resolution outlining massive inaccuracies in our 2022 election, from registration through certification. The resolution delineates meaningful remedies that will proactively protect the validity of the 2024 general election for all Americans. Your written copy cites many U.S. Supreme Court presidents and federal and constitutional mandates that support the need for such actions. Large numbers of Californians have questions about the trustworthiness of our elections. Official data show these concerns are valid, and the law says resolving them is essential in securing our liberty. The cost for not fixing the enumerated problems is immeasurable, so we urge you to put this resolution on the agenda for the next City Council meeting, where you can vote to join us in support of fair, honest, and valid elections. The United Sovereign Americans website showcases our initiatives nationwide and features some extremely informative election videos. We encourage you to visit uniteforfreedom.com and learn more about, about our organization and our goal to restore valid elections throughout our country. That's unite, the number four, freedom.com. One more time, unite, the number four, freedom.com. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Wyatt, Ron. Good evening, Mayor, Council, community. I would really like to thank you folks for coming and speaking today. Um, I have a personal uh, issue with exactly what you're doing. My youngest son is now 39 years old. When he was living at home, he applied to get a, uh, to vote by uh, mail. And he continues, he's been married and gone out of my house for several years, but I continue to get ballots for him. I've returned the ballots I, uh, to the original uh, address that I came from, saying they don't, uh, my son doesn't live here anymore, he's married, he's living in another state. But nothing ever changes. There's no way that a person that I know of, that a person can uh, find out how to uh, get somebody off the rolls. So this is a very important group for our uh, quality of, of voting to keep our, our voters, uh, our, our elections uh, safe and, and qualified. So I really appreciate you guys, and I'm going to contact you, Sue. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Item 11.1, request to add to the September 16th agenda, the United Sovereign Americans Resolution. So needs a decision by the council. So who's... Bryce, are you speaking on this? Or uh, just really briefly, just, just an announcement. So we did receive a fair memo uh, or a future agenda, um, future agenda item request memo um, to, um, for the council to consider adding to the September 16th meeting uh, a resolution uh, in line with the United Sovereign Americans uh, presentation of their proposed resolution that they introduced via public comment at a previous meeting. Um, the assessment in the staff report uh, on the cost is, is accurate as far as low cost. It's some staff time to prepare it if, if should, should council uh, determine to proceed with that. Mm -hmm. That completes the presentation. Okay. Um, council Member Marks, do you want to speak to this? Yes. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a group came and asked us if we would go ahead and um, ex uh, pass a resolution. They brought us a resolution. And I believe in fair and equitable elections, and I'm not saying that anything was wrong with our other elections, but um, I would like to see if we're interested in getting on board with other cities. There's t they, uh, they have, according to them, 20 states that have also pushed for this. And I just would like to have a chance to have the council discuss it to see if they want to accept it as is or part of the resolution. 
um, or just basically supporting fair and equitable elections? Mayor. Okay, yes, Councilmember Tovar, and then I see Councilmember Hilton after you. Thank you, and thank you for um, those comments, um, Councilmember Marks. So I'm a little um, confused here because in your request is there's no staff time and no cost, and I just heard there's very little. So there is some cost and staff time involved with this, correct, Bryce? I, I think Jimmy will go ahead and yeah, answer okay. that. Yeah. That, the cost is the same. It would be, would be for any council right. member who did a council-initiated item. So the preparation of the, you know, the, the one-page staff report is city, city staff time. Right. Okay, and you know, again, I don't have any problem having a discussion on this, but um, I, I'm just a little concerned because, um, and I remember, you know, in reading what they said and going back and listening to what they said, but, you know, am I missing something? Have we had any issues with fair and accurate elections here in Gilroy that we would even want to consider this? So I think that's getting in. Well, I don't. Discussion. I know. I think that's what has to be. We, we can't discuss it here because it's not actually on right. the. I mean, it is, this is so confusing. Me, it is on the agenda, but right. not on the agenda. Right. No. I, yeah. I, I understand. So, I'm trying not to toe the line. Here, but that's but the I point. Do, it's, right. it's everybody's going to have to decide should yeah. this be something that the council discusses yeah. or not. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Council Member Hilton. Thank you. Um, so I have a clarifying question. So Council Member Marks, you said that you believe that the that there hasn't been any issues with. Fair elections or I'm or not that saying they, that there are or there are not. I'm, yeah. I'm, this is for the council to discuss if they want to do it. Uh, we had a group of citizens that asked for this to be put on the agenda, and I felt that as a representative of all citizens, that we owe them that much. And now it's up to us to say if we want to go any further with this. So one of the one of the lines actually says, "Whereas California's 2022 general election appears to have been invalid." Yeah. So, okay, but see that, remember what I said a little bit ago? Except all of it, except part of it, except it's up to the council to do whatever. I'm not telling you that I agree 100% with it. Yeah. I am saying that we were asked if we would consider a resolution. I am listening to what the constituents brought forth, and it's up to this council what they want to do. I, I would just like to say, I understand you're, you're next to speak, Councilman Armendariz, but when it comes to the wording, that's up to us. All that was right. presented right. by the group that came to speak was their suggested wording. We get suggested wording all right. the time. Right. It doesn't mean that's the wording we adopt. So the question isn't that wording. The question is having, having, doing a resolution at all on this subject and having it brought right. before the Council to discuss. Okay, Council Member Armendariz. Thank you. Um, two points. Um, uh, we have rejected time and time again any resolutions that are not germane to our roles as a city council. Um, we've rejected them, refused to even discuss them, so I want to remind us of that. And this feels very much like that, given that we have a Department of Justice, an Office of Civil Rights, a County Registrar of Voters, a Secretary of State, um, a district attorney and um, others at the federal, state, and county levels that assess these things and our own attorney general and our own secretary of state in their reports on uh, voter fraud have found nothing of the sort in the data that um, is not even quoted or cited in this resolution. And so I have, I have a hard time um, us entertaining it because it's based on a premise that there is some type of rampant voter fraud and, and we're not getting that from our our experts right. okay thank you anyone else mayor just one last comment sorry sure. just to kind of comment on and thank you uh customer marks you mentioned that um you know you listen to the constituents obviously i think we all do and i think every some week we from gilroy okay let's not I'm interrupt sorry. i'm sorry um you know and i think again i think we hear from constituents every week on different items or different things that they would like to see on the agenda so um, again, I'm just curious as to why this one here, because uh, we hear from constituents all the time and we don't, you know, we're not throwing everything out there for discussion or put on the agenda. So um, I do have, again, I do have some great concerns about having a discussion on this. So okay. I'm going to vote no against it. So we have, I, I want to commend yeah. Councilmember Marks for following yeah. the process. We have right. a process. That's right. why we installed the process. She's followed the process. She's bringing it here for everybody to ask. Okay. She, everybody's going to feel how they feel about it. But the, the process has been followed. Right. Okay? And that this is how you ask to get something on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So if there's no other discussion, is this something I need to ask for public comment? Yes. I, oh, I do. Yeah, do. Public comment. No public comment. Okay. No public. Well, if you want to, public comment needs to be known up here. If you would like to please let our city clerk know that you want to speak, that's, yeah, I'm sorry. The, you have to let the city clerk know, and then yes. We, 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 can you, public comment is absolutely welcome. We just yeah. don't know about it unless you've let the city clerk know, okay? Thank you. Okay, and you have three minutes, and the clock is, should be visible. Okay, I won't okay. use that long. Okay. My name is Sue Bazzini, and I'm a volunteer for United Sovereign Americans, and I want to speak in favor of adding the resolution to your city council meeting next week. Many Californians question the trustworthiness of our elections. What you heard in your previous council meeting was a powerful resolution that outlined the massive inaccuracies in our 2022 election, from registration through certification. Federal law outlines strict standards that must be followed in a federal election. This is a federal election. From starting with specific requirements for valid voter registrations, we shared that in the 2022 general election, there were over 5.8 million ineligible or uncertain registrations on the California state voter rolls. Of those, over 2.7 million voted in that election. There were almost 124,000 more votes counted than voters who voted. And because of the information highlighted above, there were almost 2.8 million apparent voting violations that exceeded the 90 ballots in error that California was allowed per federal law. In California, every active person on our voter rolls gets mailed a ballot. And ballot harvesting, that is turning in ballots for others, is legal. How can we tolerate having almost 6 million ballots bailed out to questionable registrants? Our voter rolls must contain only legitimate registrations. How can we ever trust in the integrity of our elections if they do not? The resolution outlined meaningful remedies that proactively protect the validity of the 2024 general election for all Americans. Federal laws already define those remedies. USA is just demanding that our election officials follow the law. The printed copy of the resolution you received cited the many US Supreme Court precedents federal laws, and constitutional mandates that support the need for such actions. It was the last page of your resolution. Though you bear no direct responsibility for anything in the electoral process, we come to you, our closest elected representatives, for support and action. This is a nonpartisan issue. The cost of not fixing the enumerated problems is immeasurable. So we urge you to put this resolution on the agenda for your next city council meeting. At that time, you can vote to join us in supporting fair, honest, and valid elections. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Dennis. My name is Dennis Jamison. <clears throat> I'm a uh, representative of the Election Integrity Project of California, and that's been operating since 2010. Year after year, we have presented findings to the Secretary of State, to the Attorney General, to the Department of Justice, to a number of different federal and state agencies, only to be ignored. This is now 2024. We are watching what the United Sovereign Americans are doing, and we understand the realities of what they are attempting to do. And it's very simple. It's not that complicated. We're asking citizens, you are all citizens of this country, to actually weigh in on whether you're okay with questionable election results. The reality is they may or may not be, according to experts, whether there is fraud or not, accurate. And this is really the question that we're bringing up. And this is based on data research of the Secretary of State's own voter rolls that they publish. We have seen anomalies. We have seen movement in the numbers of people on the voter rolls from one point in time to another. The reality is this is kind of very strange to us, not only in EIPCA, but also now you have a resolution for USA. We're just simply asking whether you can support honest, fair, and valid elections. That's as simple as it is. A long time ago, 
a man said, you're either for me or you're against me. This is all we're asking. Are you for honest and valid elections or aren't you? That's all. All right. Thank you. Seeing no others, no public comment. Okay. Closing public comment. So it's back to council. Uh, if, if there's anyone else who wants to speak, fine. If not, um, is this a roll call or just it, a it hand raise? Hand raise is fine. Let's do a roll call. It's just, it's just well, because of everybody, yeah, that I, I see later people saying who voted how, and that's not even how, how they voted. So, okay, let's just do so. Councilmember Marks has effect effectively asked that this be on, right? So that's what we're voting on, right? Okay, Beth, if you wouldn't mind. Councilmember Brocco? Yes. Councilmember Armendaris? No. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Hilton? No. Councilmember Klein? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? No. <laughs> Mayor Blankley? Yes. It's four to three. So, okay. We'll see it <clears throat> next week. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, next item that is us to 10.4, consideration of a resolution of the Gilroy City Council calling for a legally valid 2024 general election. Is this, this is also, oh, this is Jimmy. Not Bryce, not Beth, Jimmy. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> At the September 9th, 2024 regular council meeting, a future agenda item was approved to be placed on the September 16th regular council meeting. The item in question is a consideration of a resolution of the Gilroy City Council calling for a legally valid 2024 general election. The proposed uh, resolution is attached to your packet, and at this time the council may amend, adopt, or reject the uh, proposed resolution. That concludes my report. I can answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to let Council Member Marks go first, since she is the one who brought this forward. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Back in, our, uh, back in August, we had a group of people come forth to asking if this would be on the agenda. And we have a new agenda policy here, so I thought I would try it out. And I went ahead and put it on the agenda last week because healthy discussions are, are good. And we can have all different points of view, but I would always like to see us be able to discuss it. And when I proposed it last week, I, I said exactly what our city manager said. We could go ahead and accept it as is, or we could reject it, or we could accept bits and pieces of it. And I'm just going to share what I would like to propose, and then I want to have a healthy discussion with you, the audience, and with our fellow city council members. In looking at the proposed resolution, I like the first three paragraphs, and I wish we could have it up on the screen so you could follow along with me. I'm not going to go ahead and reread it, but the first two are the introductions, and then the third paragraph talks about, I need my glasses here, talks about um, the four tenets of an election that should be upheld. The next paragraph. I, I personally cannot accept because I do not have all the information to say whether the 22 general election um, had any problems with it. I understand why the group put in data because it was substantiating what they were trying to get across in their um, resolution. However, once again, I don't want to put my name to something with all this data when I do not have all the facts of the data. So I would suggest that that fourth paragraph be removed. I would suggest the fifth and sixth paragraphs be removed and we go all the way down to now therefore be it resolved and change that to now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Gilroy that we call upon our representatives to provide, let's see, provide, I don't like relief to the people, to provide fair and equal elections. Okay, so I would really like now to have a discussion, you know, with everyone to see what you think. 
Okay, Council Member Armendariz. Sure. Um, well, first, I'm, I'm surprised that Council Member Marks, <coughs> a couple of things, um, that this even got on our agenda. Um, so to hear that you enjoy healthy discussion of items that the public brings to us is a surprise given the amount of uh, proposals that I've made for things to be agendized for discussion that have been denied by the majority, including yourself. So I'm pretty surprised at that. Um, well, we got the four other, votes. I'm sorry, I'm not so. done. So uh, the other thing is that uh, any recognition of this type of resolution with any of the language included is legitimizing it and uh, to me is, is not acceptable. Uh, the language in the first through third paragraph, I'm sorry, the third and the paragraphs thereafter are um, at best vitriol, right, and uh, don't belong in, in, they're not germane to what we're doing as council members, especially when we have agencies, like I said last week, um, that put up safeguards that contain experts that have actual researchers and reporting like the Office of the Attorney General, the Secretary of State, the Office of Civil Rights, the Department of Justice. We have safeguards and experts and actual researchers who, who uh, look into this information that pass policy to prevent voter fraud um, and go after it when it does happen. But it is very rare. And that's why when we hear about it actually happening, it's a very rare occurrence. So um, I don't support this resolution at all or any iteration of it. At this point, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to just remind everyone that what Council Member Marks proposed was to omit much of what uh, Council Member Armendariz was just referring to. I understood to. what she said. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just reiterating that because you yeah. referred to it again. So it's the first, just the first three things, and then just calling for fair elections. Mm -hmm. uh, Council Member Tovar. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. So I, I myself, I'm surprised this got on our agenda so quickly because we, um, you know, whenever we present items like this, it you know, we're always told it may not happen for a while, but this quick turnaround. So I, I was kind of surprised. At it that. was it was on the agenda to come back on September right. no, 16th. I know, but it, there was again. the date. Was so specified. I'm not done. I'm not I done. I know, there. but I'm just okay. telling you the date well, was not, specified. We don't need editorializing here. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I'm correcting. The right. date was specified. And now, right council voted. If I can, his if I can finish, you certainly may. If I can finish, so you know, we have a lot of just. And thank you, uh, Councilman Marks, for making those comments. You know, especially not wanting to uh, attach your name to how this is read, I, I, I respect that because I, I myself would not want my name to attach to this, but the thing that I'm confused about when it comes to this council is year after year after year, I hear it all the time when we're talking about resolutions where council members say no because it's not in our jurisdiction, right? There's no relationship to Gilroy, this and that. This is making a lot of assumptions. Again, if it was something that was written different and if, the, if there was legitimate concern, I mean, again, the comments about how the 2022 election was basically rigged, um, those, that's concerning to me and I think it's divisive and I think it's going to uh, divide this community when we have um, resolutions like this. But again, for me, I'm going back to what I've heard from many council members is um, if it's not part of our jurisdiction, we shouldn't even be voting on something like this. So uh, I, again, I'm going to vote against it because of that reason as well. So, thank you. Okay. Any other council members? Council Member Klein. I would just say that with the amendments that um, Councilman Mar Marks made, I, I fully back that. Um, it's, it's talking about uh, a concern that we should all have, especially now as we're going into a local election, but also state and national. Um, it should be something that we should guard, that, that voting is protected for everybody in a fair way. So um, some of that language, yeah, I think you're correct in pulling that, and so I support that on, on your, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mayor, can I yeah. ask another question? A question? Oh, yeah, sure. I guess, well, the comment, I mean, oh, thank, you for comment. Those, yeah, thank you for those comments. But, again, I, I, I think that we already have a fair and equal election. Right? I mean, I, if, if someone can tell me, give me proof that we have not had fair elections, then that's a different story. But I, I don't see how in Gilroy that affects us here, right? So, um, I, again, so I, I just could not vote with my conscience in regards to this here because I think that it's, imp, imp, it's applying that, that we here in Gilroy are not 
running our elections fairly and equally. So, again, I would have to disagree with this. So, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think you also need to realize that we're talking about future elections, too. But do our voter registration sheets need to be cleaned up? Yes. Uh, one of my friends has a, a voter registration sheet right now because of the election. We have a, a person voting who was born in 1910. That would make this person 114 years of age. If he or she is alive, I'd love to see them come down to the council chambers so we can honor this person. Uh, we've all heard of people who have gotten mail ballots for their children that no longer live in the household. And then we have heard where, um, you know, well, I have, I have friends in Oregon that still get a California state ballot because they call me up and say, hey, guess what we just got? Um, it doesn't hurt. Do we have proof through. of that? Do okay, you have proof let's of that? not yeah. interrupt. Yes. Okay. It's Council Member Yes, Marsh. Council Member. We do have proof yeah. of it. I'll be glad to show it to Please. you. Please. Um, you know, I, I feel a testiness here. You know, discussion is healthy. But if we don't agree with some of you, you get very upset by it. And you don't know 100% what's actually happening out there. Not, none of us do. But all we're saying is, let's keep things fair. We care about our voting system. We're not accusing. We're not saying Gilroy's cheating. But let's just say fair and free elections. Why is that so hard? I'm a hand okay, up. Okay. Yes, but I haven't spoken yet, so okay. I'm going to go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm. I'm in agreement with Council Member Klein. Um, any wording in this resolution that is suggesting that there has been any wrongdoing, I would not agree with. But to just pr promote fair elections, I, that absolutely affects Gilroy. We have elections here, too. It is the Registrar of Voters that's responsible for it, so it's not us who does it. But this is absolutely something that, that um, directly affects us and all of us sitting here. And so to promote them as fair is one thing. To suggest that there's been wrongdoing is something else. Right. And so I'm in agreement with what Councilmember Klein said and with what Councilmember Marks is proposing, which eliminates all of the language in the proposed, in what was proposed, that suggests um, any kind of wrongdoing. Okay, Councilmember Armadares. Sure. So first, I think that the stories that we've heard are anecdotal. Um, if you look on the website of the Secretary of State or the Attorney General and their reports on voter fraud or what was perceived at voter fraud, we have actual data by actual experts who tell us that this doesn't exist. We have our city clerk here, Beth. We have our Registrar of Voters. We have a whole team of almost a 1,000 people at the Registrar of Voters whose sole job is to make sure that these things don't happen, right? I invite you, if you've never been to uh, the Registrar of Voters when they're counting votes, when they're sorting ballots, it is very precise. It is, it is a science, right? And it's been something that, that is uh, highly scrutinized and supervised. So I, I just think it's a waste of time, but it's not victimless. Resolutions like this are not harmless. So number one, it's fear mongering. It's a tactic. Um, to many of us, it's obvious and transparent that these type of resolutions embolden people to discriminate against members of our community who are of different opinions than their own. These type of resolutions snowball into policies. This is not something we should pass so carelessly or even discuss or legitimize so flippantly. We've seen the harmful impact to our democracy that results from these type of policies, from decades of discrimination, from decades of voter suppression. Um, and most recently, millions of people were illegally kicked off the voter rolls in Texas, Georgia, Louisiana. And then a fake website was put up by members of the government of uh, very far right wing uh, leaning or voting members of the government. They put up a fake website for people to re-enroll as, as voters. This is dangerous stuff. And it starts with, with seeds being planted like this. So working class Americans, black Americans, seniors, young Americans, Latinos, they are impacted the most by these type of resolutions and they have been historically for generations. So we have folks who put their lives on the line, we have the freedom riders, we have people in our audience today who were out there fighting for voting rights and put their, again, they put their lives and their health and their safety and that of their families on the line to stand up against this kind of stuff that starts like this. So it's not okay. It's not okay for us to take our city back 60 years and our country back 60 years by alleging these things. And if you don't trust the government and government, government agencies, but you're a city council member, then I have news for you. 
You are part of this. And we have to demand respect and we have to demand trust by acting uh, accordingly. Thank you. We have 17 speakers, is that right? Okay. Yeah, we have, we have members in the audience on both sides, so that's why we don't do the clapping. This is the safe space for everybody to say what they feel. Um, I've already said it, so I'm not going to repeat that uh, none of us are asserting what Councilmember Armendariz just said, so we'll just let that Everybody can it's take that for what they there. what they want. Okay, so yeah. Beth, you want to go ahead and start uh, calling everybody to be followed by Connie Rogers, Rogers and then Aaron O'Brien. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff, <laughs> and community. I strongly support, and I thank Councilwoman Marks and the group that brought this to our attention. This is an important issue. Free and fair elections is the bulwark of our country and if we don't have those then we have chaos we don't have a democracy to ensure that we have free and fair elections is very very important and that's what this group has brought to our attention and again I strongly thank Councilwoman Marks and those who voted in the affirmative to ask for this resolution it is important as far as some of the uh, talk that I've heard, this is not an issue regarding race at all. It has to do with our country having free and fair elections. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening. I'm a volunteer for United Sovereign Americans, not a spokesperson, and I want to speak in favor of having you, the Gilroy City Council, sign the resolution in support of fair, honest, and legal elections. You as citizens and the residents of your community are all impacted if elections are not conducted lawfully. USA is a national organization active in only t over 20 states. They are so confident in their data analysis efforts of the voter rolls in each of these states that to date they have filed lawsuits in nine states encompassing six different federal circuit courts. This is not a partisan issue, nor is it an assault on election workers in our county and state. It is a civil rights violation if an eligible citizen voter has their vote diluted by those ineligible to vote. Under the 14th Amendment, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution, the states have to equally protect against denial of the vote and dilution of the vote. Can California prove it has done this? We have shared alarming data found in California. Analysts spent hundreds of hours analyzing the official 2022 voter rolls provided by the Secretary of State and found that a massive number of the voter registration did not comply with the standards defined by federal and state law and the Constitution. They used system query language, SQL, also known as system or SQL, uh, to search through the information on that database. Questions like, how many people have more than one voter ID? It's like your social security number. You should only have one. Questions like, how many registrants are deceased? Looking at the death certificates and matching those up to the voters. How many people voted before they were registered? That should never happen. How many registrants have invalid names? Blank names, asterisks, they're not complete names. How many have invalid addresses? They were incomplete, blank, or contained invalid addresses as required by law. Inactive voter status, no voting for several cycles. They are supposed to be contacted to see if they still live at that address and are still an active voter in that area. Age discrepant, invalid birth date. If they're under age, not 18, blank, the age is blank. If they're over 115 years old, those are all records that need to be looked at. How many had their birthplace altered? These were the type of questions that USA looked at. The second question. I'm sorry. Well, with the time time it's, up. Yeah, oh. it's, well, it's okay. I mean, I thought I someone else it. kept going, but okay. you shouldn't. Thank you. <laughs> our next yes. speaker. Thank you. Here's our mind. Madam Mayor, City Council members. I am a <clears throat> representative of Election Integrity Project California. Election Integrity Project California has been operating in California since 2010. I also was a former teacher. I taught at a local community college for quite a number of years. One of the things that I'm amazed about is when kids don't do their homework. You can actually tell when they don't because they're talking off the top of their head, they're making stuff up, pulling it out of their back pocket, and laying it out there and presenting it as real. What I've heard tonight from a lot of the speakers is pieces of a puzzle. It's pieces that they heard somewhere along the line, 
but they didn't do their homework. I just heard something about EIPCA, which is totally erroneous. I'm not saying that everybody who spoke here was not speaking the truth, but when you hear lies, you have to some, somehow react, or you're dead, or already brainwashed. In reality, when, when we have looked at every single election since 2010 and come up with irregularities and illegalities and nobody is listening, the reality is that we've taken our findings reports not only to the Attorney General, we've taken them to the Secretary of State, who is supposed to be in charge of the elections here, and without any response, without doing anything, there is no representative government in reality. When people don't respond, all we're doing here in this series of activities is essentially asking you, who are citizens of the United States. I'm a citizen of California, meaning I'm a citizen of the United States too, and I'm concerned about the elections, not just across the country, but here in the state of California that we've been examining time is up this time. We Thank urge you, you to vote yes to show Thank that you. you support fair, honest, and valid elections. Thank you. Our next speaker, Judy Hess, followed by our final speaker, Daniela Ariano. Hi, I'm Judy Hess. Um, I do live in Gilroy. Um, I, do, I am a citizen. And um, I just want to thank you as um, our representatives for being here every week, every month, um, to represent all of us. So all of us together make up Gilroy. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you for that. And um, as our public servants, um, we trust that all of our public servants represent us. In, in our, and I, I was glad to hear dissenting voices because that's what made America, America, that we could all have different voices. But what I just heard um, from a couple people right now was, and I was shocked, honestly, because I'm one of the people that wanted this resolution to come to Gilroy. And the reason I wanted this resolution to come to Gilroy is because um, this resolution, and I, I, I'm guessing that everybody read it, the only thing about this resolution is to follow existing laws. We don't want new laws. We're not telling people to, to change the law. All we want all this resolution says is follow the existing law. This has nothing to do, if you read the resolution, and you know, I have a few friends here, I have a few friends that are, are watching online as well. This resolution, I didn't get in my packet the, the, the backup of these numbers. I heard you guys did, I honestly I don't know. But there are backup that's, that shows the numbers here. There's nothing in here that says anything about color. Who cares about what color you are? We're Americans. That's what we care about. I've had people say that um, I, got, I got a ballot for my son who moved out of the state years ago. I, got, I hear from people all the time that the ballots are not, they're not correct. And all we're asking is to follow the law. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Okay. Any that concludes that's public speakers. Okay, then closing the public comment and bringing this back to the city council. I'm sorry. The public comment is closed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, council Member Marks, do you want to say anything, or does anybody want to? Uh, Mayor, hang, I think oh, yeah. she wants to. Well, go, I'll okay, go Council after Member Tovar. Tovar. Yeah, well, thank you for everybody that came here tonight and speak mm -hmm. about this. I mean, it's, it's a very, very important uh, issue that we're discussing here. And for my fellow council members, you know, as we all know, I mean, we were voted in to represent our community, but more importantly, listen to our community and what they felt was best for Gilroy. And a lot of us say, well, I want to hear the community. I want to hear the community. Well, the community spoke tonight, right? Uh, 14, 15 to 4, whatever the number of folks that spoke, um, as you can see, 
there's a difference between, yes, having a healthy discussion, but also seeing kind of the impacts that something like this is going to make in our community. So, again, I urge you to, again, listen to the community and vote no on this. Thank you. Okay. Co Councilmember Marsh, if you want to go next, because... Okay, oh, sure. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I know a lot of you had your speeches written beforehand before, um, you know, we had talked about some of the adjustments that we would have made to this. Uh, to be perfectly honest, honest with you, I don't know which way to go because I like what Judy has said. I agree with that. Um, the only thing we want is just, you know, fair, free, fair elections. It, it has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with, you know, any cheating going on. I never thought for a minute that Gilroy, you know, had cheating. It was just something to say, yes, you know, I can support this. Because if I didn't support it, I'd be saying I wasn't for free elections or fair elections. And to me, it was just common sense. Um, I, I already told you how I felt about the data. You know, I, you know, I, I disregarded it, you know, right off the bat. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really I don't know which way I'm going to go because on one on one side I I hear you know I hear what the audience is saying. On the other hand, I really stand behind free and fair elections, and I never for a minute thought that by saying we wanted or I wanted a free fair election that I was saying that we had illegal elections. That to me never, ever came into my thought process. It was like a continuation of free and fair elections, guaranteeing everyone had a right to vote. I never thought of race. I, ne I didn't bring this in as a racist issue. It was just like I want to protect everyone's votes. And um, so I don't know. I, well, it needs to have, if we propose this as a motion, it has to be reworded. Well, and then that might be, see if anyone else wants to talk, and if you want, I will propose a motion. But would you like to, you, you brought this forward, right, would you I like did. to withdraw it? Yes. <laughs> That's, I, I uh, mean, well, just, how does the council feel? I want the council to give me input, too. No, I'm not going to be the sole person <laughs> that's saying that. Come You're on. not going to be the sole person. No. Everybody has Mayor? to vote. You know, I, 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 want, I want to hear Mayor, everyone's I, thoughts on this. Mayor, can I, I ask a question? question? Okay, go ahead. Wait, okay, is that all right? Councilmember Armendariz is on the board. Can, do you want, is it okay to go to Councilmember no. Tovar? Sorry, okay. Fred. Councilmember <laughs> Armendariz. <laughs> you talk a lot, Fred, so I get to go to it. Well, we, okay. we all do. So... Uh, question. So if it is law and you don't imagine that there's cheating and you agree that we do have free and fair elections, then I don't see why we would need a, a resolution to assert that if you don't think that there is cheating. It seems like a, all this has been for uh, in vain and a, and a waste of time. And um, like Fred said, the people have spoken. You know, folks have said, folks, people of color, folks from all different backgrounds and stuff are telling you, are telling us. Like, this has an impact on us. This has had an impact on us for, for generations. We, it would be lovely to have this Pollyannic view of we are all Americans and we all have the same rights and equity. We don't. We don't and we haven't. And we can't erase history. We can't deny history and think that or pretend that uh, tactics like this haven't been implemented deliberately to suppress the vote of people to suppress the vote of black and brown people, of disabled people, of LGBTQ plus people for generations. And so I think one of our uh, members of the audience said, let's move forward. Let's make voting more accessible. Let's encourage people to vote. These type of resolutions discourage people from voting. This type of resolutions tell plant seeds in people's head that people are cheating. And, and yes, registrar of voter uh, employees across the country have been threatened. You know, their, people had to move, people had to change their, their last names. You know, dedicated civil servants who take an oath of office um, have been attacked. And we don't want that to happen. And we don't, wanna, we don't want this kind of um, stuff to germinate in people's minds and, and be, um, you know, untrusting of each other as voters. I've registered voters. I've worked at the polls since I was a kid. Right. Um, I've worked on campaigns since I was a teenager. I've poured over data, um, data roles. 
I've, I've seen, I've never seen like the, the things that, that folks mentioned were evidence of, of uh, voter fraud, asterisks in people's names, things like that, never. And I was pouring over voter data last night, hundreds and hundreds of names. I don't see that. I've never come across it. It is really hard to get people to register to vote, and it's really hard to get them out to vote. So uh, I wish we had a problem with people clamoring to vote. You know, I wish that was our problem, but it's not. And, um, you know, like, like somebody said, we need to encourage people, not discourage them. So I really encourage you, Council Member, to, to um, rescind this resolution. You know, I just, as I sit here, and you know, and I, I agree with what you're saying, I hear you. I just don't see how the words in a resolution, we want a free and fair election, is offensive to anyone or accuses elections to be not fair. I just don't see it. It's just like saying, yes, I, I would, I am shocked by the number of people that came out tonight to talk against it. And you should trust because them. Hear them um, and trust them. Okay, let's not <laughs> interrupt. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, as you would say, I'm talking. Okay. Um, so. I don't know. I still need to hear from two council members. <laughs> council member Tovar. Oh, council member Bracco. Sorry, my board's changing. Yes. Um, like Carol, I'm, I'm really not sure what to do on this. Um, I know that the Santa Clara County Register of Voters, they're like top notch and they do an excellent job. But I also realize there's other registers of voters around that you know, they don't have the resources and, and they, they don't do as good a job. Um, but looking at this with the corrections, it's uh, like the gentleman that got up at our last meeting and said, it's simple, either you're for a legitimate election or you're not. That's what it, it, it kind of came down to for me. So. Yeah, I don't know one way or the other. And I do want to correct an individual that got up and said I don't return her emails. Oh, I agree. I did a search of your mm -hmm. name and I have never received an email from you. So if you want to contact me, you need to call me and see why I didn't get your emails. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Council Member Tovar. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Given where we're at currently, Mayor, and given that no one has um, made a motion to pass this resolution, I would actually like to make a motion to completely reject, reject this resolution. I'll second that. Okay. Okay, okay. is there any other council member discussion? Okay, then, yeah. I, We'll, we'll, we'll take a vote on that. Sure. I, just, I just wanted to, to go and say that um, everybody should be in support of fair elections, and I believe everybody in this audience is, everybody who came to speak. Nobody was saying that there shouldn't be fair elections. Um, sadly, we, when we get things on the agenda, what goes in the packet, I mean, I don't even get to see in advance, so it just, what, what went in the packet is not ever, it's not anything that the council said they were considering. It's just what goes in that was submitted by somebody. And so nobody here was ever considering the wording of this, which was the subject of many of the public speakers here, was the wording that was here, and that was never what we were going to adopt. But as important as it is for everybody to have access to voting, every single person who is eligible, who, who lives here, who is a resident here, to vote, it's just as important that the that votes are not diluted, as one person said too, so that they be accurate. And I am not here saying that they aren't, but to promote that they should be, that we would always strive for that, is no different than anything else that we vote to strive for. I personally don't see the necessity of adopting a resolution here on this subject, but I feel that way about much of what others bring forward to, the, to this council when it comes to uh, resolutions and, and, and proclamations. A lot of it is stuff we do because it feels good and it's not something that we necessarily have to, um, have to bring. So we have a motion and a second. Um, so we'll take a, take a roll call vote. Council Member Bracco? No. Council Member Armendariz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Klein? No. 
Council Member Tovar? Yes. Council Member Blankley, or Mayor Blankley? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That it be withdrawn. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. That brings us to our next agenda item.